Here in Lou, we're investigating a story of two chapels. In the medieval period, they belonged to Glastonbury Abbey, the important Somerset monastery famous for cultivating the legends of King Arthur and Joseph of Arimathea. And according to local legend, it was Joseph of Arimathea who brought Jesus Christ to Lou Island and left him to play in the safety of these beaches while he went off to do business with Cornish tin merchants. If people really did believe that Jesus played here when he was a lad, that would have got people flocking here, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, that would have driven a whole pilgrimage industry of people coming out here to see, you know, and the support structure for it. It's just that sort of thing that people travel around to, to visit. So you're really champing the bit now, aren't you? Well, of course I am. I mean, the point is that, that time and tide are the two things that wait for no man. We have got to get off of this island by early afternoon. And we've only got half our diggers because the others are, I don't know if you can see, just round the headland there, up on that hillside. What are they doing there, Mick? There's another chapel over there, halfway up the hill, and they're, and they're said to be the same size. One's said to be a copy of the other one. But the mainland chapel has been excavated already, hasn't it, Phil? Well, that's right. I mean, partially dug, at least. I mean, in the 1930s, some local Cornish archaeologists went in there. They were slightly eccentric ideas. They were desperate that it should be pre-Norman, and they kind of labelled it Celtic. Yeah. What do we mean by Celtic, Mick? It's a shorthand term in the West Country for something that's after the Romans, but before the Normans. But, of course, we don't have Anglo-Saxons in this area, so it, it's, it's a short-term term for that Dark Age period. It's safe to say we can expect some rather complicated archaeology relating to different phases of chapels on both our sites. These are medieval shirts of Polk. One's actually got a little spot of glazing, so that helps me a little bit. I think these are mid to late 13th century. So how does that fit into the, uh, the history of the island and this chapel, Nicholas? Well, the late 13th century is when Glastonbury is giving up this site and bringing the monks back. But it's possible that this is one of the last monks or priors of the place. And if it's not that, it's the Lord or Lady of the Manor. It's clearly a very important grave. It's being excavated out of the rock. It's at a pole position in the church. Ian's found what looks like a kissed burial. But you're going to be staying here anyway, aren't you? So will you let us know at some time what it was? Sure. Cheers. Matt, we've got to go, like, now. OK, let's go. Even as we're loading onto the boat, another kissed burial emerges from under the south wall. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Tony. Thanks for having us. Cheers, you're welcome. It's beginning to look like this enclosure could have been a burial ground for thousands of years, maybe even into prehistory. Over the last few days, we've discovered that the story of our two chapels began long before Glastonbury's monks arrived, when Lou Island could well have been one of the earliest outposts of Christianity. Sometime later, another chapel was built on the mainland, at the same height, looking to the island, with our reliquary box at the altar for pilgrims to visit. And eventually, in the 12th century, Glastonbury's monks rebuilt both the chapels as a sort of St Michael theme park. Over the last three days, we've just scratched the surface of this magical island, which has been a very special place going way back long before Christianity. Hello, my name's John Gator. Time Team is fan-funded by Patreon. This vital support helps us to make new episodes. Joining Patreon gives you access to exclusive interviews, 3D models and masterclasses, plus lots more.